This has been such a rich time of talking about prayer, learning how to pray, uh, talking about what the essence of it is, some of the hindrances, how Jesus taught us to pray. It's just been a wonderful time. I want us to conclude this final time, Dave, with talking about the role of prayer in revival. Because mm -hmm. as we pray, I think sometimes people think, well, praying, what does it do? I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just this one little guy. But one little guy with a great big God <laughs> can see extraordinary things Absolutely. happen. And so revival, and when I say revival, that's a time when a season when God comes and visits his people, renews his people, mm -hmm. uh, where his glory is manifest in a person's heart, in a community, in a church, in a nation. And uh, so what is the role? There have been a lot of historic revivals, Certainly. national revivals take place, community revivals. Mm -hmm. What is the role of prayer and how does prayer relate to revival? Let's talk okay, about that certainly. in it's this so, session. It's so important. You know, my, my, uh, my way I've always defined revival is when God shows up for church. Hmm, yeah. You know, it's when we yeah. really experience His presence in ways that we have believed before, but now it's real to us. Yeah. The interesting thing is, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone, read anyone who disputed this, that there's never been a revival without there first of all being a movement of prayer. Right. And that goes all the way back in the Old Testament. That There are uh, seven major revivals with Israel in the Old Testament. Right. Every one of them was preceded by prayer. Yeah. And down through the last 2,000 years of church history, there has never been a revival without God, first of all, stirring up His people to prayer. And when you look at this, I think there's a number of reasons. I don't think it simply goes to one. But you look at the fact that prayer is this act of humility. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it is coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, we have tried to do this on our own. We can't do and it. And we have failed. Yeah, we can't do we, it. We, I, I look right now at what's going on in the world around us, and I'm saying, God, the best of us have failed. Mm -hmm. And we need you. We need you to step in. We need you to do what only you can do. And so prayer puts us in a place of receiving from God. It's a place of, of humility. It also then, and this goes right along with that, is that place of repentance. Because we talked about confession we earlier. Have, yeah, That's confession right. Confession and repentance. Mm. Uh, the, the passage that we so often use, and I know it's an Old Testament one that applied, uh, first of all, to Old Testament Israel. But the principles apply to any people of God if my people mm -hmm. who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Right. You know, there's a bunch of stuff there and it all relates to prayer. Right. If, if you will do this and those are all prayer things, then I will step in and do what only I can do. But you must do what you can do and then I'll do what I can do. And that principle, I believe, has literally been in effect for thousands of years and still is today. If we're to see another great awakening, and Sammy, I, I believe like you do, that there is yet right. at least one more great awakening. Yeah. This ingathering of souls, an awakening of the people of God, an empowerment by the Spirit of God, and a fresh vision of who Christ is mm -hmm. that is to come. It will come because we've been a people who have placed prayer in its proper place, mm -hmm. confessing, repenting, crying out, humbling ourselves before Him, seeking Him, and asking Him then to come and do what only He can do. Yeah. You know, and uh, this, and I, I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but uh, what we're doing right now could be a part of that. Hmm. Uh, there's literally hundreds of thousands of people inside the nation of Iran watching this, people in Romania who are watching this, and, and God speaking to your heart right now saying, I want to be a person of prayer. And people in places that we never imagined. 
right. are beginning to pray. And this, this, what we're calling people to do here could be a very part of that great revival that's taking place. Because what happens is, I, what I found is God begins to stir in the hearts of the people to pray. People begin to say, hey, we need to get together pray. We need to have a time alone to pray, which is what we've been doing in mm -hmm. this, this, these sessions here. Right. They're saying we need to begin to seek God. And so when God begins to move, he stirs in his hearts of people this longing to meet with him, to mm -hmm. seek his face, to turn from our wicked ways. That's right. So, yeah. so I, I think in some way that this could even be a part. Those people who are listening to this by the app, I, I know that uh, God's doing something right now in the privacy of your, your room, your house, where you're at, watching this video mm -hmm. right now that God's stirring in your heart to pray. You know what's important uh, for all those who are, who are watching, who are listening, is to understand that it isn't up to you, and yet God won't do it without you. Yeah, uh -huh. which is a wonderful it, thought. It, it's, a, it's an amazing thing here. God is going to wait on our prayers. And I find myself almost speechless mm -hmm. considering that, that truth. And yet for us, we look at ourselves and say, well, I'm just one person, or it's just my little family, or we're off in this village, or we're off doing this, and how in the world could we change things? And once again, you're not. You're, you're not really the one that's changing. What you're doing is doing what God has gifted you to do, and that's simply to come before him in humility and to say, Lord, we need you. I need you, I need revival, my family needs revival, our church needs revival, our nation needs revival, our world needs revival, and Lord, we can't schedule that, we can't put it on our calendars, we can't raise funds to go do it. Lord, all we can do is what we're doing right now. Yep. Just yep. me, yeah. pray. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things that's exciting about this is that God is no respecter of persons. Right. The scripture says, who has despised the day of small things. A lot of the revivals have begun in the little places. Oh, yes. In small villages, small communities, uh, sometimes in out of obscure places. They've started and spread uh, a, a, around a nation. So uh, you are important to God. And you with God, and just think about Mary. <laughs> One little girl, young woman, in a little town in Israel, a nobody. And God said, I want to use you. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that in prayer and revival and birthing a, a revival, God comes to the, to the lowly, the and, humble and, and of heart. And isn't it interesting, you use that example of Mary, and here's this young woman up in Galilee, and while that was going on, there's this old couple, yeah. Anna and Simeon, elderly in their 80s and they're just day and night crying out to God in the temple and God uses a young woman and uses this old couple and together their prayers usher in the Messiah. Yeah. Think what God can use with the prayers of literally every person who is watching this and listening. Something can happen significant because we pray. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you I've seen with my eyes, I tell you, I have seen with my eyes the glory of God in a nation. When a pastor in Romania taught his people, Pastor Ola Liviu, taught his people to pray, and they prayed in a way that no one imagined would ever happen. They prayed that one day they would preach the gospel in the stadiums. They'd preach the gospel on radio and television. And people said, it's impossible because we're persecuted. And God brought it to pass. A group of people began to pray and an explosion of revival took place. Now, it didn't happen the next day. It didn't happen the next year. It didn't happen the next decade. <laughs> it, it took a long time of praying, but it happened. God's glory came. Don't lose hope. Keep praying that the presence and the majesty and the power of Jesus Christ would fill our nation, would fill your heart, your home, and your nation.